three statistical secrets that you need to know heading into the Monaco Grand Prix. Welcome to the pit wall, your stop for fantasy Formula One content. You can like and subscribe to be more up to date with content like this. I'm Jay Jack and let's go. The first statistical secret is dynamic pricing. I'm about to share with you the crazy story of Alfa Romeo. At the beginning of the season, they were valued at 8.9 million. They have shot up 0.3 million in the last three days. There are only three constructors that have maintained a positive value since the beginning of the season. So for one of them to just shoot up like this, I gotta share it with you. But why is this such a strange story? Well, let's dive into the details. This is in the infographics tab of my Google spreadsheet. You will see here that the Alfa Romeo does not seem like anything to write home about. It's the third from the bottom. But why would this lowly team be skyrocketing in value right now? What is unique about this constructor is most of the time you will see that the value of a constructor is tied to one of their driver's performances. Not so with Alfa Romeo. Raikkonen and Giovinazzi have never been in the positive sentiment since the season began but Alfa Romeo has been trundling along and as you can see with that gradual increase in sentiment right after the last race and now suddenly it seems like they're shooting up shooting up twice wow why is that the case so why the sudden spike? There are two components. First is what I'm calling the super rich teams. These are teams that are averaging 106 million in team value. If you were to look at the summary page, you can see that the top teams, the top value teams are between 106.5 and 106.8 million, which means that they have the money to be able to afford the second component. And that second component is the power streak. The fifth race of the season, Monaco, is eligible for many drivers to get a race and a quality streak that is a total of 15 bonus points over the course of that race weekend with these two components of super wealthy teams and wanting to afford the power streak and with all these drivers and constructors added together getting the race and quality streaks that could be a upswing of plus 60 points and that is why i'm calling it the power streak so why would this alpha romeo constructor with just a mere 1.3 points per million with a negative 0.8 percent value which means it's overpriced and even more so going up 0.3 million why would this constructor help these wealthy rich teams with those power streaks. Well, Fantasy Formula One does not share statistics for teams that are picked less than 5% across the global league. What you can see, Alfa Romeo has steadily been in the top five for trade-in over the last week. And so let me kick it over to my price point so you can see why Alfa Romeo is being picked. Remember, the average super rich teams are in the 105 million mark. And if you look at the top, Team 1, you will see that they can afford Hamilton, Verstappen, Leclerc, Norris, Mick Schumacher as your rounding out fifth driver, and then that constructor, Alfa Romeo. You'll see right now that the value to be able to afford that team is 105.9 million. But if you were to take out all the driver's value increase and even Alfa Romeo's 0.3 million increase, you could have been on the low end of 105 million at the beginning of last week to pick it up and afford it. If you look at the average, that's 154 points. Then you add in the four race streaks, the power streak of plus 60 points, and you are sitting at 214 points. And if you would like to see my video, I'll put in the link in the description about the mega driver potential this weekend. Think about getting 214 points base and then adding more points on top of that because you're mega driving Hamilton or Verstappen. Imagine getting over 300 points in one race weekend. But let's say you're not one of the super rich who can't seem to afford the power streak. What is your alternative? One, I would recommend not picking up Alfa Romeo. Their average of 12 points. That's two points higher than Mick Schumacher. But what I'm presenting for you in team two is an alternative. You can still get the same amount of power streak, 60 bonus points, and get it for under 100 million. You've heard that right. You can afford the team two. Ricardo, Verstappen, Leclerc, Norris. You could have Russell or Mick Schumacher, depending on which one you would like, and then Ferrari. So you could still afford the power streak this weekend. That is statistical secret number one. Statistical secret number two is the track. 
The third sector of the Spanish Grand Prix is very technical and many say that how a team or driver would perform in sector three of last race give an idea of how well that driver would perform at Monaco. Because there's not a lot of passing opportunity in Monaco, if you can qualify high, you're probably going to remain high. I looked at the sector times at the Spanish Grand Prix and I'm comparing them with free practice one and free practice two in Monaco. So let's take a look. You will see on the left hand side, sector one, two, and three at the Spanish Grand Prix. And you're wanting to focus in on sector three. I include the other sectors so you can see the improvement primarily in Ferrari. Clerk's 11. By the time he gets to sector two and then three, he's fourth. Same thing with signs. He is 14th and jumps all the way to fifth. Realize that these two drivers are only behind the likes of Hamilton, Botas, and Verstappen. But when it comes to sector three, that means that the high drag, the downforce package of the Ferrari is excelling in sector three. When we get to Monaco practice number one, you have to recognize that Leclerc had to sit out most of free practice one because of a problem. So he's at 20th, but as soon as he was available to start running the track and practice two, he shot up to number one. Where do you think Sainz is? Wow, second in both practice sessions. So this is why Ferrari has become a hot commodity. You can see the top three, Botas at three, Hamilton at two, and Verstappen at one. If you go over the Monaco, you can see that you have Verstappen at three and then four. You've got Hamilton from five to three and Botas from six to fifth. So the Ferraris were able to leapfrog the three that were in their competition in sector three of Spain. Now there is a question. What do you do if you've got a fifth driver like Ocon or Gasly? Which one would you want to pick? Well, let's look here to see how Ocon and Gasly did going into Sector 3 in Spain. Ocon was 9th and 10th, but he shot up to 6th into Sector 3 of Spain. That means that the Alpine, especially Ocon, was going to be more favorable in Monaco. Same thing with his partner Alonso. He did better in Sector 3. Gasly is interesting. His car was 17th in the power part of the circuit. In Sector 2, he was 7th. Sector 3, he was 9th. So you could see that he was actually in a very similar outcome to Ocon. It's just Ocon seemed to be much more consistent in the power part of the circuit, which is why the Alpine was stronger on that track. But when we go over to Monaco, you will see that Ocon is 16th in free practice one and 14th in free practice two, which means that he's not performing as strong in Monaco as he did in the third sector of Spain. Gasly, on the other hand, was fourth in free practice one and seventh in free practice too. I just watched a video by Nico Rosberg talking about his home Grand Prix, Monaco, and he says that you have to build as you go through the weekend. Lewis Hamilton actually said a very similar thing earlier this week. You have to build your time and build your confidence as the race weekend continues. Nico Rosberg's point is that the driver who can get up and quickly to his lap times has a huge advantage over the other drivers. So the C. Gasly have such a big confidence in driving over Ocon means that Gasly will have the edge over Ocon, at least as it comes to free practice one and two. But if you watch it like a hawk, free practice three, and it seems that suddenly Ocon has round the turn and is performing better than Gasly, then he would be the one you would want to go with. The main thing you want to remember, there's a whole day gap on Friday, no racing, which means that free practice three will give you a better idea of their qualifying pace. And so you want to watch these drivers to see how they perform at free practice three. And now on to statistical secret number three, the drivers. My top pick for the Monaco Grand Prix is Leclerc. Wow, Leclerc is surprising everyone. His seasonal pick rate is 41%. His trade in rate has been quite high leading into this race. He is a strong candidate for turboing. He was the best turbo option last race in Spain, and he's looking to be the best turbo option for this race in Monaco. He's tied fourth highest in points per million at 1.3. He sits behind Norris, which is a 1.8 million, Mick Schumacher at 1.7, Verstappen at a 1.5, and Leclerc is tied with none other than Hamilton at 1.3. On top of that, Leclerc has his streak and race bonus available. That is a plus 15 points. And if you turbo him, you get to double all that. So Leclerc is definitely the value pick. And now it's time for my picks. 
Team one has the philosophy where I draft and keep no more than one sub per race. Team two is my day trading team. The big difference between these two teams is because last race, Leclerc was my turbo driver for team one and team two had Norris. If they both had the same turbo driver, they would be very similar, which shows you do not have to chase the value. Pick a solid lineup and their value will naturally increase. Team one's value is 102.3 million. Team two, because of day trading, is 103.2 million. And while team one is not going to have any change in my lineup, team two, I've made some changes. Instead of having McLaren, I have Ferrari. Then I'm going to turbo Leclerc, even though I've been traditionally turboing Norris on team two. I am keeping Ocon. I know I discussed earlier between Ocon and Gasly. The main reason that I'm keeping Ocon is because Ocon's value has been increasing over the last few races. If Gasly suddenly turns it around and seems like he's going to improve, well, I get the benefit of when I sub out Ocon for Gasly that I have the higher team value. And then the big change, dropping signs and picking up Ricardo. Now, if I had known how strong signs was going to be this race, I probably would not have picked up Ricardo. But here, here is the situation. I was trying the day trade, and this was before free practice one and free practice two. I had dropped signs to pick up Mick Schumacher because signs was not going to gain in value. Well, because I had made one sub already for Mick Schumacher, that meant that I would have to make a decision to go back to signs or pick up Ricardo. And I decided to pick up Ferrari and Ricardo. But here's the thing about signs. The difference between a driver and a constructor is the bonus points. But I have Leclerc, and if I believe Leclerc's gonna beat out signs, then that means Leclerc's going to get the bonuses, which means it's actually not a problem that I don't have signs on my team because any point signs would score will be reflected in Ferrari. So keep that in mind. The constructor has all the points that the drivers have except for bonuses. And those bonuses come from beating their teammate or race streaks. Signs is not eligible for any race streak bonuses or quality streak bonuses this race, but clerk is. And there you have it, our three statistical secrets for the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm so thankful for the 251 of you that have joined the pit crew. It is amazing to have you. Thank you for being a part of the team. And until next time, I'll see you on the pit wall.